Due to some circumstances out of my control, I need to live in constant motion. If I remain in one spot for too long, well, unpleasant things tend to happen. To avoid this, I took up a nomad lifestyle of living out of my car or in motels. Being a truck driver is out of the question because I would be requested to have certain routes. I can't even stick to a certain routine for very long. I think this life may be hard on others, but I found myself perfectly content with always traveling. The only real downside is my bank account suffered. In order to stay warm and fed, I took jobs most people aren't even aware of through a corporation regular folks should never find out about. Some of these jobs were simple. Go to one place and see if anything weird is afoot and report back. The corporation always needed eyes on the ground and I didn't need to solve the problem. Just confirm if there is one. I received a request to go speak with a forest ranger in a fire watch station a few days drive from my location. The job's pay was to cover at least a month of gas, so I accepted it right away. Sometimes I got lucky and could knock a few small jobs off at once, but this time I only had the interview request. I went directly to the listed forest and checked in with the ranger's station. The ones on duty gave me a side eye, wondering why I wanted to talk to one of their rangers on duty. He hadn't told them about anything strange going on, and people tended to not want to hike all the way to the fire watchtower to give some news. I lied saying I was a distant relative and told them some family issues came up that the ranger needed to hear about in person. I didn't want to ruin his reputation mentioning my real purpose for being there. They offered for me to talk to him over the radio, but I was adamant on walking over. They looked at my polished yet well-worn shoes and dress shirt. I may live on the road, but I dressed like an office worker when I took jobs. Nothing said I needed to dress sloppy just because I didn't have a real home. They waved me through asking to sign out whenever I came back. The hike wasn't pleasant and the heat made me unbutton my shirt a little by the time I could see the tower through the treetops. My shoes hurt my feet and I cursed myself for being so stubborn on looking formal. I wasn't getting paid for this so I refused to complain to anyone but myself. I arrived at the base of the tower to see a man pacing, waiting for me. They sent him a radio message ahead of time saying I would be on my way and he assumed the real reason why anyone would come to see him in the middle of the forest. I raised a hand to greet him when we got closer. He was taller than myself with a long beard, his eyes dark and sunken in his face and his clothing hanging loosely from his frame as if he lost a lot of weight recently. His hand shook at his side, clearly showing he wanted some sort of vice, but didn't have whatever his body craved. Are you uh, Barry? I asked, not bothering with a last name. That's me. You're the one they sent? The, uh, you know, the company that deals with this sort of thing? Mr. He trailed off, clearly forgetting my name. Adelaide. I said quickly and got right down to why I arrived. You said you've been seeing things in the woods. What sort of things? Since a few hikers have gone missing, the corporation wanted to gather information to see if they could figure out the cause, I explained, sounding as positive as possible. Barry gave a distrustful look. He appeared to be the type of person who didn't believe in anything that lurked in the woods besides hungry bears that was, until he experienced something strange himself. He acted reluctant to speak about it, even after I came all this way. He needed to accept that no matter what he said, I wouldn't dismiss him outright. Finally, the ranger cracked, saying what he doubted anyone would take seriously. I've seen a girl the past few months. She's, she's dead, or dead-looking. I really didn't want to know what she would do to me, so I looked online and found all sorts of weird protection charms to keep her away at night. She just 
stands at the foot of the stairs, screaming for me to come down. I can't tell any of the other guys about this. They'll boot me for sure. I need this job. I can't do anything else. He sounded exhausted. I nodded, listening and taking in his story. I asked him to show me what he set up and found salt lines and symbols drawn in chalk along the wooden railings. I knew from experience that the symbols did nothing. Most were from video games or other sorts of media. The salt may be useful on keeping some creatures away, but I didn't know what we were dealing with just yet. He even showed me footprints in the dirt he said belonged to the girl who screamed at night. That was interesting. The shoe size was far too small to be his own. Either some person was out in the woods messing with him, or something not natural really waited for the ranger when the sun went down. I checked the time, finding the sun set in about three hours. I debated on what I wanted to do. I wanted to believe him. I wouldn't dismiss a story like this because something supernatural was implied, but I couldn't take it at face value either. I needed more proof besides a tired forest ranger and some footprints. I didn't know how long it might take for the dead girl to show up. I could risk staying for five nights, maybe less. If any signs of something odd didn't appear by then, another person needed to be called to finish the job. My payment would be cut too. This dead girl needed to not be shy for my sake. I told Barry I wanted to sit and wait at the foot of the stairs that night to watch for her. He looked at me as if I was crazy. Then he got angry. You don't believe me, do you? He accused the lack of a decent night's sleep causing him to have a short fuse. I believe you, but in order to call in a more experienced agent to solve the problem, I need proof. The agents are in high demand, but I also need to know what we're dealing with so we can send in the right person for the job, I explained. Thank God I've been blessed with a soft voice. I calmed Barry down, and he nodded. He didn't like the idea of me staying unprotected outside, though. He called the ranger station to tell them I would be staying the night. The sky started to change colors, and we went halfway up the wooden stairs. Looking down, he attempted to talk me into not staying so exposed one last time. She'll kill you. I don't know how, but I know she can, he said, voice shaking over the idea of the dead girl in the woods. It's fine if she does, I replied, not thinking much about what I said. I mentally kicked myself and went down. Don't worry about it. I've been through a lot of jobs like this, I assured him. He didn't look as if he believed me, but refused to stay anywhere but in his tower for the night. He left me behind when night fell. I wished I brought a jacket along when I started to get a bit chilly as I waited for anything interesting to happen. Barry gave me a flashlight before he hid away for the night. I got bored and started to click it on and off under my chin, attracting bugs. I really don't like the woods. I didn't mind the bugs, but hated getting bitten. In my line of work, nothing good happened in the woods. I felt as if humans should just stay clear of them to avoid all the trouble. I heard something off in the trees and got to my feet. With the flashlight in hand, I scanned the woods, trying to find the dead girl Barry spoke about. This was my job, but I still got a little scared. All right, a lot scared. I felt terrified of seeing her. I wanted this all to be some sort of prank. Some bored high school kids were playing on the forest ranger that crashed their party in the summer. That wasn't the case. And I learned the hard way. I turned to check behind me, convinced something might be crawling up, ready to attack. I breathed a sigh of relief, seeing nothing. Thinking myself a bit silly from getting so worked up, I turned again, and my heart nearly stopped when my light landed on a pale figure standing a few feet away. Barry wasn't lying about how she looked. If this was a prank, then the person behind it was better at any movie studio doing makeup. 
I could no longer believe this was any kind of joke when my light shone through a rotten hole in the figure's stomach. My hand shook, and I almost screamed when she took a step closer. Her one foot twisted in a way that made her walk with a limp. Her skin pulled back and clinging to her skull and lips, gone. Long black hair, limp and falling out in places. One hand missing some fingers and I suspect some sort of small scavenger animal took them. At least I knew sort of what I was dealing with. She was physical, not a ghost like I first assumed. Ghosts can emotionally break you to the point where you'll never recover. An undead creature like her could just kill me and eat my remains. Some days, I didn't know what was worse. I, uh, I'm here to help Barry. Could you tell me? I started to ask in a very scared tone I hated myself for. I wanted to ask her why she was there and what she wanted. Sometimes creatures were friendly and just wanted to talk. I've come across a great deal of the nice monsters, but wasn't so lucky with her. At the mention of the ranger's name, she snapped. Her mouth opened wide with a loud, echoing scream coming from it. I took three steps back by the time she covered the distance, her thin, rotten hands falling on my warm flesh and tearing. Her screams were the last thing I heard that night. She made quick work of my insides, and I bled out within seconds. I assumed she kept tearing my body apart, but I wasn't aware to know what happened after I died. Yes, I died. And when the sun rose, air filled my lungs again. I gasped and coughed. My body repaired as if nothing happened. Not even my clothing remained torn. All the pieces back into place with only tracks in the dirt and a broken flashlight as evidence of the attack. I died and came back. Those are the circumstances that kept me on the road. I can't tell you how I gained this power. It's just something I found I had after death came for me one day so many years ago. No matter how I die, I come back perfectly fine the next sunrise. I haven't been killed that many times since I found out about this odd quirk. I still felt pain and held on to the memories of my death, so I tended to avoid it if possible. I come back to life in the same spot I died in, so if someone were to bury me alive, every sunrise I would come back stuck in one spot. This power isn't as great as one assumes it to be. I rolled over, still dazed and trying to collect myself. It always took a few minutes to get past the pain of being killed. I sat up, trying to find traces of the girl. I did want to help her. Even after she killed me, I felt as if she needed someone on her side. Seeing her reaction and the state of her body, I started to get a terrible idea of what happened to her. I wanted to confirm my thoughts, though. Without any cell phone reception, I needed to leave and come back after I gathered some more information. Barry must have seen my body from the watchtower scattered in the dirt that night. I guessed he was asleep or refused to look outside because he didn't call down when the dead person got up and started walking back down the trail in the gray morning light. I've never had someone watch the moment I came back to life, so I didn't know what it was like. Did all my body parts snap back together? Did I just appear all fine and dandy? I decided I didn't like that train of thought. The idea of it made my body itch. I stayed at a nearby motel using their terrible Wi-Fi for the rest of the day. I went back down the hiking trail with a new flashlight and a plan in mind. I needed to confirm what I found out. It was a stretch of theory, though, and if I wasn't right, I might just doom an innocent person. I arrived by the time the sun had set. I noticed some movement in the fire watch station. Barry was still there, and I didn't report into the ranger station, so I didn't know if he told the others about my death or not. Hey, Barry, can we talk? I shouted upwards, hoping he could hear me. 
It took a few minutes, but he opened the door and looked down. In the dark, I couldn't really see his face, but one could guess what expression he wore. A dead girl and now a dead man. I bet he thought he was losing it. She, she killed you, he shouted back down, sounding almost angry that I stood there alive and well. Yeah, that sucked. Anyway, can you confirm something for me? I asked, wondering if I needed to go up and get him. His attention got drawn somewhere else. Even at a distance, I could guess at his line of sight. I brought my flashlight to shine over to the woods in time to see the girl taking a few steps out. Her dead face looked shocked to see I was alive. I only had one shot at talking with her before she snapped again. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm here to help you. Can you put off killing me for a minute? I asked her in a softer tone than what I used with the ranger. When she didn't move, I looked back up at Barry. With her here, he wouldn't come down. I didn't like outright accusing someone of a crime, but he wasn't giving me much of a choice. Anna Jones went missing six months ago. Her boyfriend was arrested under suspicion of killing her. He folded and admitted he assaulted her, but she fled into the woods, still alive but injured. You were on the search team trying to find her. Why didn't you mention any of this? I spoke sternly, making him read between the lines of what I wanted to say. We never found her, Barry shot back, about to turn away and hide. The dead girl tensed at his words. She let out a low growl and her hands raised, ready to attack us. I knew she could tear through the watchtower door and Barry had his time limited unless I kept talking. Why is she here? She shouldn't be standing at the tower every night tormenting you if you didn't do anything. I said back, the girl taking a few steps closer, causing my heart rate to spike. I swear, I never touched her, he shouted back, hysterical. Cut the shit, Barry. This time I shouted, my normal kind tone lost in a deep growl. It startled Barry and Anna. She froze, not expecting the outburst. I really hated swearing and only did so when needed. I jolted the ranger enough to say something that confirmed my terrible theory. She was going to die anyway. The woods went silent as his words faded into the dark. I glanced over at Anna, her thin arms wrapped around her rotten body. She hunched over, shaking in rage over what happened before her death. Her boyfriend, someone she trusted, got drunk and assaulted her. When she ran into the woods and at death's door, another man showed up. Someone that should have done everything in his power to save her. I didn't ask him to elaborate on what Barry did. My throat already tasted like acid, and I had trouble keeping my own disgust towards him down. As an act of revenge, she came back to torment him every night. Anna, strong enough to kill Barry with her undead body, but she wanted him to suffer for as long as possible. I felt myself agreeing with her. How she was moving around was a bit of a mystery. I've heard such a thing happening before, but not the reasoning behind it. Some places like bayous and deep ancient forests held power no humans understood. Sometimes this power acted in the strangest of ways when mixed with a human will. Anna had enough willpower to borrow some of the forest power and to make her rotting body move out of spite. I respected her for that. She moved again, and I put myself between her and the stairs upwards. Her hand raised, and I remembered the pain from the night before. I flinched, but stood my ground. Listen, please don't kill him. I swear I have a good reason to ask you this. I told her, arms spread wide, trying to keep her back. He deserves it, but... I was sent here by a corporation that deals with supernatural creatures. If you're perceived as dangerous, they'll hurt you. I don't know if you'll still be alive after your goal of revenge is taken out, but I don't want to risk it. 
You shouldn't be punished for taking action against the one who hurt you. She hesitated, the dead face making it impossible to read her emotions. At least she listened. I took a step closer, waiting for her to lash out. When she didn't, I offered my hand. Let me call in some favors. We'll arrest him for what he did to you, and he'll rot in jail until he dies a natural death or gets fresh with another inmate. I know people who owe me a few things. They can put a curse on him to ensure he doesn't take his own life, and they can also give him nightmares more terrifying than anything you could think of. That is, if that's what you want. A long, tense moment came between us. I knew Barry couldn't hear anything we said. I thought I heard him slam the watchtower door and lock it, but didn't risk looking up. Anna's dead eyes flicked over my own, trying to spot a lie. A drip of sweat ran down the back of my neck in the cool night air. Finally, she cracked, her face muscles working to cause her lipless mouth turn into an odd smile. I smiled back at her, my heart aching for what she went through. She took my hand, ready to let someone else take over her act of revenge, and happy she finally met someone she trusted. Although, I did let her bang on Barry's door for a few hours that night and scream to spook him a little bit. In the morning, I made some calls. Police came by and found Anna's body to be taken home and buried. She found a tree to curl up under, ready to not wake up again. Barry was arrested, and he raved about Anna coming every night and completely snapped. Him saying I had been killed only to come back the next day didn't help his case at all. With some prodding, he admitted in detail what he had done to a poor, lost, dying girl. But... I never asked to hear what happened. Knowing as much as I did already felt like too much. I got paid a little extra for closing the case instead of just reporting on the details. The corporation knew of my ability to come back after death. They never abused it, though. Not once did they send me on a dangerous job knowing I would be the only one to live through it. I didn't have any strengths besides breathing again every morning after being killed so was outright useless on bigger jobs. I kept looking over the extra money in my bank. It left a bad taste in my mouth. I got in contact with Anna's family and sent them the money for funeral costs. Attending the funeral didn't feel proper, so I promised myself to leave flowers at her grave at some point. I did have friends who could place the curses on Barry as promised, but never called them. His mind was gone completely. He no longer had any notion of reality. The idea to end his suffering by his own hands would never come to mind. His every waking moment haunted by Anna, even though she no longer was around to do so. One small case was solved unexpectedly. I feared there may be more girls like Anna out there waiting to be found. Sadly, it wasn't my job to find them. I only got requests like hers on occasion. Most of the time I needed to check to see if a hotel was haunted or if a guy really did see the ten-foot beast in the woods and wasn't drunk off his ass at the time. I honestly wanted there to be less jobs and cases like this one and that every person that got lost in the forest arrived home safe and sound. I hated when another set of parents had to grieve over their missing child. When it happens, and if I had spare time, I had some freedom to do whatever possible to bring them home one way or another. At least each job paid enough for me to afford gas in order to get to the next. Sometimes things turned out well. Sometimes they didn't. My life, like my death, was completely out of my control. Getting into my car, I found directions to the nearest and cheapest hotel to get washed up and rest before tackling the next request and wondered where my life might take me. Even after doing this for so many years, I didn't have a clue of what would come next. Has anything really creepy ever happened to you while you were camping out in the woods? 
Leave me a comment and let me know. I hope you enjoyed this story. If you could please give it a like, it would really help my channel out. If you haven't subscribed, I really hope you do so. We'd love to have you as a part of our family. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a wonderful day or night, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye.